as I have traveled down the long, dirty, depressing road of life over these last 62 years. If I have learned anything, it is that there is much confoculation amongst new GMRS users over how to program their new GMRS radios to use a repeater. So in this video, as in all of my videos, I am going to take a subject that is admittedly very confusing, and I am going to explain it in a way that even you will be able to understand it. In other words, get ready for some long, hard, rough, brutal, and very graphic D confoculation. Now, before I start deconfoculating you, it is very important to point out that everything I am about to reveal to you applies only to real GMRS radios, such as this Wuxin Ocean KG905G GMRS radio. If you are trying to follow along using a ham radio, such as this Bufwang UV5R, then you are in for a world of pain and regret. Because a ham radio is different from a GMRS radio when it comes to things like programming repeaters. So if you have a ham radio, just give up now and go treat yourself instead to a frosty gym. You can find the recipe on the Google. It is also very important to bear in mind that the exact steps will vary slightly from radio to radio, but all of the basics are the same. But if you do get stuck, let not your heart be troubled. All you need to do is read the fucking manual. Now allow the deconfoculation to begin. Before you can program a repeater into your GMRS radio and make use of that repeater, you will need six things. You will need a repeater capable GMRS radio, you will need to know what frequency or channel the repeater is on. You will need the tone for that repeater. You will need to be within range of the repeater. And you may need to get permission to use the repeater from the repeater owner. If you have watched this video this far, then supposedly you have already completed item number one. So we will now proceed directly to item number two, which is obtaining the frequency or channel of the repeater of which you wish to use. There are several ways you can go about completing this step. A common way is to just ask your radio dork friends that use the repeater. But since we all know that most radio dorks do not actually have any friends, an alternative and often better method would be to look up this information in the online realm. There are several websites that you can make use of to look up repeaters in your area. I prefer to use mygmrs.com. There you can search for repeaters near you and get the channel or frequency of the repeater that you wish to use. So as you can see in this example, and for this repeater, we can see that it transmits on 462.600, my gigahertz. And if we look up that frequency on a GMRS channel frequency list, we can see that this translates to GMRS channel 17. However, because this is a repeater on our GMRS radio, we would need to use repeater channel 17. The next bit of information we will need is the tone that the repeater uses. And in the repeater world, there are two different types of tones, the transmit tone and the receive tone. And these two tones are the root of much confoculation. So come close now so that I can begin to slowly and very gently deconfoculate you. In order to transmit on the repeater, you must have the transmit tone. This is the tone that your radio sends to the repeater to make the repeater start listening or open up. As the radio dorks often refer to it, this tone gets outputted or transmitted from your radio and is received on the repeater. Now, just as I previously warned you, this is cause for much confoculation. So just remember, your radio transmits this tone, and the repeater hears it on its input. So this tone is usually referred to as the transmit or input 
tone. And for this particular repeater, as you can see, the transmit or input tone is DPL023. And this can be another cause of confoculation because there are different types of tones. You got your CTC, you got your CTCSS tones, you got your DPL tones. DPL tones are the same as DTC or DCS tones. So basically you got your C tone and you got your D tone. Your radio may have different names for these tones, but they always will start with either C or D. You need not worry yourself about the differences between the C tones and the D tones. You need only to concern yourself with entering the tone into your radio correctly. Now, I am sure at this point that some people are very eagerly banging away on their keyboard right now to try and tell us all how smart they think they are by leaving a comment declaring that what I said a moment ago was wrong and that not all repeaters require an input tone. And to be fair to all the socially maladjusted radio dorks out there, this is true. However, 99.999% .99 of all GMRS repeaters do require a tone. Most repeaters also utilize a receive tone. This is a tone that is transmitted from the repeater and received on your radio. And allow me to be very clear about this. This receive tone is optional. I'm going to say this again for those that may have trouble paying attention. You do not need to use the receive tone to use a repeater. However, you must either enter the correct receive tone or specify no tone at all on your radio. If you have the wrong tone entered on your radio, you will never hear the repeater. So even though this particular repeater in our example is transmitting an optional receive tone for simplicity purposes, I am going to ignore it and you should too. So to recap so far, in order to use this repeater, I know that it is on 462.600 my gigahertz, which according to Google translates to GMRS channel 17, which because it is a repeater means that I am going to use repeater channel 17 on my radio. And we also know that this repeater requires a D tone of 023. So now for the fun part, I go to my radio. I ensure that I am on repeater channel 17. I go into the menu. I find the menu option for D tones. This is the receive tone setting. This is the transmit tone setting. And I'm going to set that at zero, two, three. And even though I am not going to use the receive tone, I need to go into the menu and make sure that there is no receive tone programmed, which as you can see, it is set to off. Otherwise, if I had the incorrect receive tone. I would never hear the repeater because remember, there must be either no receive tone set on your radio, thusly, or the correct receive tone. And now repeater 17 is programmed and ready to use, which brings us to item number C on our list that you may recall from the beginning of this video, which is being in range of the repeater. And this can cause even more Confoculation. If you recall from the map on the MyGMRS website, it will show a range for the repeater or how many FARs this repeater can talk. However, this range of FARs is only an estimation of FARs based on whatever the repeater owner decided to arbitrarily type in. And it does not account for mountains or other obstacles between the repeater and your particular location, which could block the signal completely. In other words, just because your location is inside the green circle or within the specified number of FARs from the repeater, this will not necessarily guarantee that you will be able to reach the repeater and use it. And as though that were not confoculating enough, even if you can hear the repeater, which most of the time is transmitting at 50 watts through a giant antenna, this does not necessarily mean that your dinky little 5 watt radio and its puny little antenna is going to be able to reach that repeater. So remember this simple rule of thumb. Generally speaking, most of the time, on average, usually in most cases, 
if you can hear the repeater, you will be able to use the repeater, but not always. And the only way to know for sure if you will be able to reach the repeater and use it is to try it. You can do this by pressing the push to talk button on your radio for a second and then letting go. In the radio world, this is often referred to as kerchunking the repeater. Then you listen for the kerchunk sound or tail squelch sound coming back from the repeater, which will confirm that you are reaching the repeater. It sounds like this. Some repeaters even have a Roger beep, making it even easier to confirm if you are hitting the repeater. So if you hear that kerchunk sound or the repeater's Roger beep, you know that you are hitting the repeater and thusly are able to use that repeater. Optionally, you can call out on your radio and ask for a radio check. That means asking for somebody to respond to you to let you know that they can hear you. However, it is important to bear in mind that some repeaters sit silent for days at a time and there may not be anyone listening to answer you. But if you are hearing that repeater return sound, then you know that you are hitting the repeater. And finally, the last item on our list from earlier permission to use the repeater. It is very important to always bear in mind that virtually all GMRS repeaters are privately owned, usually by some guy that used his own hard-earned monies and invested his time to set that repeater up. And he may choose to require that you have his permissions first before you can use his repeater. If you get your information online and the repeater is listed as open, as you can see here on the My GMRS listing for this repeater, then generally no permission is required to use the repeater. But otherwise, it is the civil thing to do to ask the owner for permission before using his repeater. You can do this easy on the MyGMRS.com website by sending a request for approval. Or you can just call out on the repeater and ask who to talk to or what the procedure is for getting permission to use the repeater. If you get no response from the repeater owner, most people just use the repeater anyway, unless and until the owner asks them to stop using it. It's your call. Congratulations, you are now a YouTube certified GMRS radio repeater channel programming expert. Leave a comment below to request your certificate to hang on your refrigerator so that your whole family can see it.